Welcome to church. This week, Pastor Bev is starting our new sermon series that focuses on Alpha. In Alpha, we'll be exploring some of life and faith's biggest questions. His sermon will follow the question, is there more to life than this? And if you're new here, we'd love to get connected with you. You can message us on Facebook, Instagram, or by simply texting hello to 587-323-1199, and we'll respond right back. We're so glad you could join us today. Um, I go on Google. Google. I definitely Google. I go on Wikipedia. Internet. I uh, scroll through all the different answers, and then I try and combine it, and then make my own kind of like cornerstone. Or smart friends. I don't ask big life questions. It's too hard to answer. Google or my grandmother. I meditate or I read. When I have a big life questions, I probably go to my family. I haven't really had any massive ones yet. So. To my mom or my dad, basically. My mom or my dad, maybe my grand. I get most of my answers from the library in any section there because I don't really trust the people that I'm around. The key is always to yourself. You got to figure some things out for yourself. If I'm confused, I go to him first. And he confuses me more. But when it's something more personal, I try to find it within myself first. Thank you for joining us as we're starting our new Alpha series, which will continue right to just before Easter. I'm the associate pastor here at Calvary, and we want to welcome each and every one of you, those of you online and those of you here in person, especially any first-time guests. The Alpha course that we're going to be highlighting is something that Pastor O.J. was passionate about and is passionate about. And our elders affirm that this is the direction we will be going for this next number of weeks to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge us to fulfill God's heart for his people, which is to not only live out our faith, but to share our faith with others in a way that reaches those who are wanting to know of him. And so a key component of what we'll be doing over these next number of weeks is the presentation by our different pastors and then a small group presentation, which will help us to get an idea of another key component, which is the time afterwards where people talk about the presentations that are given on a regular basis. Our hope is that it will inspire, encourage, and challenge each one of us to actually consider reaching out to those nearby to us, family members, friends, others who we have connection with, people who may actually want to know about Jesus. The Barna Research Group discovered that 61% That's more than one out of two people said that they would be willing to study the Bible if a friend or family member were to ask them. It was over 30 years ago that I was one of those people who a friend invited to a Bible study, and through it, I became a follower of Jesus. Alpha, I believe, is a perfect opportunity for you to do just that. And so we begin our first message in our series Is there more to life than this? As we know, life is busy. Every day, there's so many questions. What should I wear? What the weather is going to be like? What's happening today? And how do I fit that all in? But there are bigger questions. Why am I here? Where am I headed? Is this it? Is there more to life than this? And these are life's big questions, but there rarely is enough time to think through them properly. And we have all different perspectives on the meaning of life and and faith. And Alpha is an opportunity to explore the big questions of life. So where do you go when you have these big questions? Google, Wikipedia, family, friends, yourself? Alpha is designed for people who would not necessarily call themselves Christians. And let's hear from Nicky Gumbel, the founder of Alpha, who at one time would clearly admit that he was not a Christian. For much of my life, I was not remotely interested in Christianity. In fact, I didn't think I'd ever come to something like Alpha. I was not brought up as a Christian. My father was a secular Jew. He was an agnostic. And my mother didn't go to church. Uh, And 
I had no interest at all in Christianity. First of all, I just thought it was so boring. Everything to me about church, Christianity, religion was just dull and dreary. And it kind of made me feel a little bit guilty. I didn't know why, but I just didn't want to have anything to do with it. And I also thought it was untrue. I, I thought I'd sort of thought it through and uh, I'd come up with these intellectual objections and I call myself very pretentiously, I call myself a logical determinist. And I quite enjoyed arguing with people who called themselves Christians. And at university I had a bit of a reputation for being an argumentative atheist. And I also thought it was irrelevant to my life. I couldn't see how someone who'd lived 2,000 years ago, 2,000 miles away, could have any relevance to my life today. It just seemed outdated and irrelevant. But at the same time, looking back now, I would say something was missing. I say that because I don't think I was living in the moment. I was always looking forward to the next thing in life. So when I was at school, I was thinking, when I finish my exams, maybe that will be when I'm going to really start to enjoy life. I finished my exams, and then after about three weeks, I started to think, there's got to be more to life than this. And I thought, well, maybe when I've left school, that will be what life's all about. And then I left school, and after about three weeks, I started to think, there's got to be more to life than this. I thought, well, maybe the answer is to get a girlfriend. And somehow, I don't know how I managed it, but I managed to find a girlfriend. Again, after about three weeks, I started to think, there's got to be more to life than this. And, and basically, there was something missing. I was longing for more. The actor Jim Carrey said, I wish everyone could get rich and famous and have everything they ever dreamed of so they would know that's not the answer. Some people dream of having their name in lights of fame and fortune. Some people seek happiness through relationships, career, money, whatever it may be. But do you ever get that niggly feeling that as good as those things are, there must be more to life? All too often, life doesn't turn out the way we think it should. And even when we do achieve our wildest dreams, it somehow never seems to be enough. It just doesn't satisfy. It's like there's something missing. The comedian and actor Russell Brand said, drugs and alcohol are not my problem. Reality is my problem. Drugs and alcohol are my solution to fill up the hole inside of me. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. In other words, I am the one who fulfills the longing that is deep inside every human heart. Jesus claimed to be the one person who can satisfy that spiritual hunger. Freddie Mercury, the lead singer in the rock group Queen, had amassed a fortune and attracted millions of fans, but he admitted shortly before his untimely death that he was desperately lonely. He said this, you can have almost everything in this world and still be the loneliest man. And that's the most bitter type of loneliness. Success has brought me world idolization and millions of pounds, but it's prevented me from having the one thing we all need, a loving, ongoing relationship. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Ultimately, there is only one relationship that is totally loving and goes on forever, and that's a relationship with God. And Jesus said, I am the way to that relationship. So what makes you happy? A number of people were asked that question, and their responses included a number of things, such as money, music, sleep, gym, friends, dogs, alcohol, men, women, clothes, and many said, I just don't know. I have no idea. When I was a teenager, I began to notice that things at a distance were fuzzy, were unclear. I wasn't able to read signs unless it was big lettering and I was close by. So an eye exam was arranged for me, and sure enough, it was discovered that I'm nearsighted. That is, I can't see far. And as a result, I needed glasses. And I got a pair of glasses, and as soon as I put them on, I realized everything, like colors, were sharper, everything was brighter. It was like, wow, I was amazed everything was so clear. And I could see before, but now I could really see. And to me, that is the best way to describe the difference that Jesus makes. Jesus is the lens through which we see God. He is also the, the lens by which we see the world in a totally different way. Jesus said, 
I am the truth. Some people's response to a Christian saying that might be, well, that's great that you believe that. You have found meaning and purpose for your life, but that's not for me. But when you think about it, that's not actually a logical position because if Christianity is true, it is of vital importance to every one of us. And if it's not true, it's not great for us because it means we are deluded. C.S. Lewis, one of the greatest intellectual giants of the 20th century, is probably best known as the author of the Chronicles of Narnia. He said this, Christianity, if false, is of no importance, and if true, it is of infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. Nicky Gumbel, whose story of faith we just viewed, said this, I come from a family of lawyers, so naturally I wanted to look at the original documents and sources for the Bible. I never really looked at the evidence before, and I was astonished at how much evidence there was for life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus. For me, it was looking through these documents that in the New Testament that I came to discover that it is true. He went on to say that one of the last cases he did as a lawyer in the Court of Appeals was in front of Lord Denning, apparently an astonishingly brilliant mind, perhaps the greatest judge of the 20th century. He said on one occasion that his Bible was the most tattered book he had in his library. He carefully and thoroughly examined the evidence and he came to the conclusion that it was true. One former professor of history at Oxford University described the resurrection as the best attested fact in all of history. He also said, I hadn't realized how many of the pioneers of modern science were believers. Descartes, Newton, Kepler, Galileo, Locke, Copernicus, Faraday, Kelvin, and Pasteur. Francis Collin, one of the greatest scientists of all times, was the director of the Human Genome Project, mapping three, three billion letters in the human DNA and considered to be, by many to be the most scientific and most important dis discovery of all time. He describes how he encountered Jesus and came to believe in the truth of Christianity. Well, in the home where I grew up, uh, faith was not something that was talked about very much. Uh, my father was a professor of drama, my mother a playwright. Uh, when I went to college and those discussions in the dorm late at night about religion uh, began to occur, I had no particular reason to attach value uh, to a faith system. It had never been something I was familiar with or had internalized at all. And I assumed that any religious feelings that anyone held must be on the basis of some emotional experience, and I didn't trust those, or on the basis of some childhood indoctrination, uh, which I felt I was fortunate to have missed. I loved the experience of learning about the human body and all of the components of that, and I particularly loved being introduced to genetics. But then I ended up in the medical school curriculum sitting at the bedside of patients with diseases. This was no longer an abstract study of molecules and organ systems. These were real people. And one afternoon, one of my patients, a wonderful elderly woman, much like a grandmother uh, who had very bad heart disease. Uh, she had a particularly bad episode of chest pain uh, while I was with her. She got through it, and at the end of that, explained to me how her faith was the thing that helped her in that situation. She realized that the doctors around her weren't really giving her that much help, but her faith was. And after she finished her own very personal description uh, of that faith, she turned to me, and I had been silent, and she looked at me quizzically and she said, what do you believe, doctor? And ultimately I had to admit to myself that her question had made me realize that I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with. Is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. If there's one thing scientists claim they do is to arrive at conclusions based upon evidence. And I hadn't taken the trouble to do that. I was greatly assisted uh, by a pastor who lived down the road who I went and asked about all this and who gave me a copy of C.S. Lewis's wonderful book, Mere Christianity, because here was an Oxford scholar, a prodigiously developed intellect, who had traveled the same path. Within those pages, I realized for the first time that one can come to belief 
on a rational basis. And that in fact, given the many pointers that one sees around oneself in terms of the universe and it having a beginning, and it's fine tuning in terms of the way in which all those constants that determine the behavior of matter and energy seem to have been set just in a certain very precise range to make life possible. Uh, and many other things, including my beloved mathematics and why they actually work anyway to describe the universe, something that makes you think the creator must have been a mathematician. That brought me then to the person of Jesus Christ as a person who was historically extremely well documented. That was news to me. I thought Christ was as much myth as history. And I realized after reading more about it, this was a historical figure upon which we have a great deal of evidence for his existence and his teachings and even his rising from the dead in a literal way. That day at uh, my patient's bedside started a journey for me a journey that I was reluctant uh, to begin, but I felt I needed to, a journey that I thought would result in strengthening my atheism, but to my surprise, resulted in my conversion. There's a difference between knowing facts about someone and really knowing them personally. Now, I've known my wife Mandy for 40 years, but suppose if before we met, I found her on a website called The Amazing Woman. Now, there's no doubt I would have looked at her and thought, okay, I am intrigued. But what about if every page was dedicated to her amazing abilities, her sparkling personality, her tender heart, her intelligence, and her great cooking abilities? Well, I would think that, wow, she does seem like an amazing person, but that is head knowledge. But I also have the privilege of being married to her, and she, I know she is an amazing person. This knowledge comes from experiencing relationship, and that is heart knowledge. When Jesus said, I am the truth, he was talking about more than a kind of intellectual truth. The Hebrew understanding of truth was truth as experienced. And there is a big difference between a kind of intellectual knowledge and a personal knowledge between your head and your heart. So when someone says, I know Jesus is the truth, they are not just talking about being convinced of the evidence. They are also talking about experiencing a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. And lastly, he said, I am the life. I have come that you may have life and that you may have it to the full. Jesus came to deal with the things in our lives that stop us from enjoying life to the full, the things that spoil our lives. Nikki Gumbel, we heard of earlier, said, I hate shopping. I loathe it. I'm allergic to shopping. Nonetheless, at Christmas, my wife Pippa persuaded me to go shopping as things were on sale. We went into the shop and we bought this very nice sweater, the same color as all my other sweaters, and we left the shop to buy a present for my wife. We went into the shop. It was so crowded. Even Pippa said, enough. And she said, okay, let's leave. As we went to leave, the security alarm went off. And the security guards moved in very quickly and stopped everyone from leaving. As the crowd was trying to leave, I was stopped, he says. And the crowd was trying to move in, and they were stopped too. We were right in the middle. The six of us who were going through security at that time were all taken to the side, and they wanted to see who of the six of us had set off the alarm. So they sent one of them through, and that was fine. They obviously had not set off the alarm. Then they send the next one through, and the third, and the fourth. None of them set off the alarm. So it was left to Pippa and I standing there, and I thought, oh my goodness, I've married a shoplifter. It must be Pippa who set off the alarm. So they sent her through, and she didn't set off the alarm either. So I thought, oh my goodness, I've obviously got something. Someone must have planted something on me. I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to be going to prison. The crowd was watching me. They were watching this criminal who had just been caught going through. And so I went through and the alarm went off. And they took me to the side and they opened my rucksack on my back and they found the sweater from the other shop with the security tag that had not been taken off. Nikki goes on to say, I felt so guilty. That was like false guilt. I also sometimes experience true feelings of guilt because I do things that are not right, not good. And this is the wonderful news that God loves you 
and he loves me. God came into the, in the person of Jesus Christ, his son, to die for you and me on the cross. He took all of your guilt, all of the guilt, everything that you have done, everything that I have ever done wrong, said wrong, or thought wrong. He died in our place <coughs> that we could be forgiven. And forgiveness, <coughs> excuse me, forgiveness, C.S. Lewis said, is like a recording of our life that is wiped out completely. When we receive forgiveness and we find life, and life in all its fullness, this is what Jesus wants for you and me, life in all its fullness. Let's listen now to the story of Bear Grylls, a world-renowned adventurer, writer, and television presenter based in the United Kingdom. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strive to be strong in myself. And it was as if that all I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. And I don't want to do this thing called life. I don't want to do it on my own. And it kind of feels like my longing for this, this light inside is now stronger than my fear of what others might think. And people often ask, well, doesn't that make uh, faith like a crutch? And, you know, well, maybe, but, you know, what does a crutch do? Uh, a crutch helps you stand and it makes you stronger. And in that case, you know, sure, I need a bit of that. But especially when it's so much more than that, when this faith inside is also, also like a backbone, uh, helping me stand tall and help me be strong when I'm really up against it, facing those odds, whether it's on a mountain or stuck in some jungle, or just dealing with the storms, you know, with the storms of life. Uh, sure, I need it, I, you know, I, I need that. Uh, but at heart, my Christian faith says that I am, that I'm known, that I'm known to Christ. Uh, bought at a price, uh, blessed with light. Uh, faith says that we're loved, regardless of our mess, uh, regardless of how many times we fall down and that Jesus somehow picks me up. And sure, you know, I'll reach out to that. Why, why wouldn't I? Christianity, boring, untrue, and irrelevant. When I first read about Jesus, I realized he was anything but. Sorry there, I misplaced a page. Jesus said that he is the way to God. He is the one who brings meaning and purpose to your life. He said that he is the truth. He is the life. That true fulfillment is found in a relationship with God through him. An Alpha is a place where you can be yourself to say what you think and challenge everything. No question is too complex or too simple. Whatever your point of view is, it is as important as anyone's else. And over the weeks ahead, we're going on a journey together, an adventure to explore, to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. Think of it this way. If you live to be 70, you're going to spend 20 years and three months asleep, 10 years and five months watching media, five years and nine months in some form of transportation, seven years and six months eating and drinking. You hopefully have many years, months, and days left to life, so why not spend the next number of Sundays together addressing life's biggest questions? That being said, perhaps today you're thinking to yourself, I've actually heard enough already. I want to hear more, but I'm ready to become a follower of Jesus, the way, the truth, the life. If that's what you want, I want to give you the opportunity to do something about that right now. You are welcome, if you wish, to say this prayer, repeating it after me, to begin the next step on your spiritual journey. You can say after me, God, today I have heard that Jesus is the way to you. He is the one who brings meaning and purpose to life. That true fulfillment is found in a relationship with you through him. I want that relationship with you, God. So please show me how I can have that, how I can have you in my life. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer today, I would invite you to text LIFE at 
323-1199. And we will reply to you with next steps on your spiritual journey. Any questions, comments, etc. regarding today's presentation, you're welcome to contact us and we would be happy to dialogue with you. So welcome to Alpha. Now we're going to transition to a second and just as crucial part of Alpha, and that is the small group discussion time being modeled by several table members. Now each Sunday following the Alpha presentation, we will have the Alpha discussion, which will include a diverse group of people who have viewed the talk and will interact with the material presented, as well as anything else that comes up. This week we have Cheryl, we have Marvin, Sean, and myself. Now usually the group is made up of people who are Christians, who are followers of Jesus, and also people who aren't necessarily Christians, but nonetheless interested to know about Christianity and about Jesus. Now with that in mind, I've asked several members of our group to interact as though they are not necessarily followers of Jesus, so that as much as possible we could have an interaction that is close to real life. Uh, thank you each one for joining us today. And we only have a few ground rules that I want to make you aware of in our discussion, and if you can keep that in mind. Uh, we don't have to talk, but we encourage each and every one, if you're willing, to share your thoughts with each other. All comments and questions are welcome, but please be respectful. And different opinions are allowed and encouraged. There is a good chance we won't all agree at the end of each session, but open discussion is the goal rather than total agreement. And everything that is said in the group is to be kept confidential. Okay? Good. Now the group will be, will be talking amongst each other and occasionally though maybe we'll take a look at you, but the focus is the group itself. Normally in Alpha, we would actually be meeting around a table and we would have more than four people. You could have six, maybe even eight. But because of COVID restrictions and because we don't want to have our backs to you, we're doing it in this fashion today. Okay, this morning, we'll begin by asking you each to uh, give us your name and one thing that is unique about you, and, and I'll start. My name is Bev, and what is unique about me is I used to be a forester in South Africa. Marvin, if you would like to share. Hello, my name is Marvin. Um, I was first thing to say is good morning. Um, for a native language, I'll say, Magandang Umaga, and just came back from Mexico a couple months ago, so buenos dias. And that's what's unique about you. You're a world traveler. Okay, Sean. Hi, I'm Sean, and um, I used to be a bus driver. Okay, Cheryl. Um, hi, I'm Cheryl, and um, I wasn't born in Canada. Okay, okay, another question then. How and why have you come to be part of Alpha? And I'll start by answering the question is that I'm the facilitator of our Alpha group today. And it is my hope that through today and in the days to come, that these presentations and our interaction will help us to better understand about the Christian faith and also to discover more about Jesus. How about you, Cheryl? Um, I came because Sean actually has been on my case for a little while to come to Alpha, and she finally wore me down. Okay. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Sean, how about you? Um, I came here, well, because I was invited by Pastor Bev, but also just to participate and help others know more about Jesus. Okay. And Marvin? Um, well, so Pastor Bev asked me a question. He said, what is your favorite road trip snack? And I said, apple. And he said, alpha? No, I, I mean apple. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm getting cheek now, but it's alpha. <laughs> so I'm here now. Okay, thank you very much, Marvin. Now, we've had an opportunity to, to see the, the presentation, to watch the various videos with regards to uh, Nikki Gumbel and also Francis Collin and then uh, Bear Grills as well. Uh, and also other parts that have been presented. Are there comments or questions or anything that you might want to share with regard to our group with regards to what you saw? Cheryl. I actually found it very interesting about Francis Collins and his um, discovery of faith by going through to the evidence. 
Okay. Sean? Well, Bear, I liked how he said some people think that having faith in God is like a, a crutch. Mm. But the crutch keeps you standing up when you're injured. Right. And it's like a backbone. I really liked that. Yeah, that's true. Marvin? Um, well, Mr. Gumbel, um, it was interesting when he said that he was uh, looking for that missing piece and trying to um, be committed to that um, and not living in the moment. I learned from a cancer patient in Mexico saying that if you live in the past, you're, you're angry, you're living in the past. If you are happy, you're living the present. If you're worried, you live in the future. So honestly, when he said live in the moment, I kind of relate to that. Okay. So that's my comment to Mr. Gumbel's okay. little sp speech there. Oh, thank you. Well, if, if, if God indeed exists and we had the opportunity to ask him any question, any question at all, what might that be? How about you, Sean? Hmm. I'd ask God, why does he allow young people to die? They don't get a chance to live their full life. A very good question. Very relevant. Cheryl, how about you? I would ask God, um, why am I here? Okay. Marvin, how about you? Um, my question, if I had to ask God, if he's good, strong, caring, kind, why is there suffering in the world? Pretty relevant. Yeah, well, we hope we'll be able to address some of those questions, not always be able to give all the answers, but certainly to have opportunity to discuss these very big life questions that we all face, whether ourselves personally, our family, or friends, or others as well. Any other comments that you want to make with regards to what we saw today, and what we've been talking about just now? I know this is just your very first session and maybe you're not really comfortable yet, but we will have further opportunity. I think, Cheryl, you were going to say something. Uh, yes, I was going to ask a question about the when he talks about evidence, will we be going through any of the specific evidence yes, about I, Jesus? Actually, next Sunday, the, the topic is, who is Jesus? And we'll be uh, speaking about that. So that's a very good question. Because as, you, as Nikki talked about and as Francis talked about, they were very much wanting the evidence. They wanted to see what there was to prove that of the Christian faith and of Jesus himself. And so very important question, and thank you for asking. And that's what Alpha is all about, is discovering meaning and purpose as we go through a journey, finding out more about things that we, we've put in our minds, but maybe haven't spent a lot of time uh, researching, but now that will be the opportunity. I was just gonna ask, are we also going to answer Marvin's question, why there's suffering in the world? We will be talking about that as well. Okay. I have a question also too. Um, what are sinners and what are they? And what's the meaning of a sinner? We are going to be covering that as well. Now we've got, we've got quite a number of weeks. So there'll be lots of opportunity for discussion, interaction, opportunity to, to further get to know each other on the journey that we're on. Any last comments before we, we wrap it up for today? Um, yeah, so some people call me Starving Marvin, so you can call me, call me Starving Marvin. Okay. Because I'm always hungry. <laughs> You're always hungry. Okay, that's good. Um, I'm playing. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking the time to, to, to view the, the presentation and then for our discussion together. And so each week we're going to be having this format and we're going to be having different people be part of this discussion team. And if you would like to be a part of that discussion team, please do let me know because we want to make this as realistic as it is possible. Let us take the opportunity to pray together before we close today. We want to say thank you, O oh Lord, that we've had an opportunity in just a small way to address the question, is there more to life than this? And we believe there is, and that's found through our relationship with you through Jesus Christ. And so I pray that as we interact each week, 
that we would even perhaps start inviting family and friends and others as well on this journey that we're on. And we remember as well our brother OJ praying for your miraculous and direct intervention in his life. And we thank you that we're able to do this presentation, something that is so close to his heart. We want to pray for his encouragement and that of his family during this challenging time. And we say thank you that we could pray this and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today in person and online, and we look forward to meeting with you in the coming weeks. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. If you need anything, don't hesitate to contact us. You can find more information on our website, Facebook, or on YouTube and Instagram. We'll see you again soon.